but for those of us who aren't here, you're here in spirit. You couldn't be with us today during these difficult times, during this COVID pandemic that we have. So it's a little different than it probably normally would be. Uh, the families, the, the Wu, the Fang, and the Quan families, you're here in spirit, not in physical presence, but we'd like you to take the opportunity to be a part of this with us today. I'm going to say a couple things. Actually, a lot. I have a lot of cards, and I'm just going to go by these cards because uh, it's only fitting for, for why, for the difficult times that she's gone through. Why was hospitalized for three months and two months with basically no contact from family, except over the phone, FaceTime, and that was brief. So it was difficult for her, her last months, you know, uh, not being around anyone, it had to be tough for her. And we could only hope that she's in a better place now with her family, her loved ones, and not suffering. Okay, I have some cards, and I'm just going to go through some things. You may like what I'm going to say, and some of you may not. Don't be offended. Why? Her favorite words. No. I say. Yum cha. Shut up. And so G. Pretty much the most famous word that I learned in Cantonese. And it was directed at me. Uh, and if anyone knows so G, it pretty much the translation means crazy. The language barrier was broken due to the laughter and smiles she shared with family members, especially the kids. Living with Y, for those of you who know, we, d we did live with Y, the family, uh, Linda, myself, Mia, and then Alyssa was born. Then we brought our dogs in, and nobody said anything. Sai, why? They didn't say anything about us tearing up their house, putting everything that we had, putting our refrigerator in their dining room. So, living there. There's nothing better than coming home and having why have a cooked meal for you. When I came home from school uh, there, and uh, even to why ordering side to go up to the bedroom to vacuum it for uh, us. And he quickly went up and would vacuum the, the bedroom very routinely. When, when why lived with us, Inside, when they took care of the children for us to help out. Why had it down to a science as far as cooking the food from when I came home? And, and it literally just came off the, the stovetop. And I have to say that I got fat <laughs> and I got sick of my favorite dish, which was chicken and black bean, because Grandma Y made chicken and black bean every day. Chinatown. Y was able to maneuver around Chinatown, and she would inevitably run into friends and coworkers. She knew the ins and outs of Chinatown, and maneuvered herself around like a, a rat on, on speed. She could take you through an alleyway and through this door to that door and wind up at a, at a place that you wouldn't even know was a restaurant or an eatery. I think that Y would say that the greatest development, greatest technological development on earth was the development of YouTube. She held that, she held onto her phone 
like a teenager in middle school. She can manage to show, she can manage to watch a show on YouTube, on her phone, listen to the Chinese news broadcast, and watch a Chinese soap opera on her TV. So all three things she'd have at once. I also, when, when I lived with, with Y and Tsai, I found out that I needed to stop saying that something hurt because inevitably Y would be up with lotions and creams in her hand wanting to rub me down. <laughs> nothing, nothing was better than getting a, a call in the morning, on a Sunday morning, from, from Y. And she would say the most beautiful two words that you that one could hear. It was my indoctrination to the the term yamcha, which the English translation would be dim sum. And she would just call up on a Sunday and, and say yamcha. And my response always was was yes. And we would go. The best part was that <clears throat> Why would order everything? People, waiters, uh, uh, would would look in dismay and, and not believe that we'd eat the food that she ordered. Mm -hmm. And if you gave us two, three hours, which we normally did use while we went there, we ate all the food. And the best part was that why almost always paid. She would take out her envelope and uh, pull out money and, and pay. Always cash in the envelope. And then she would uh, always, always make sure that she tipped the waiter or, or anybody. She always knew how to take care of the working person. A fond memory of why would be when she approached me, almost like a, a, a schoolgirl, and pointed to a, a photo and said to me, my mommy, and pointed to the photo. And I didn't get what she was really saying. And she was speaking to me as if she was a, a, like a, one of my own children, saying, my mommy. And I didn't really, I had never really heard that from somebody who was probably 60-something years old at that time pointing out her mommy. And that's a, definitely a memory that I'll never forget. Again, the only word that I really learned, I, I never learned anything in Chinese after being around the family for uh, probably 17 to 20 years, uh, was so chi and or pay, which <laughs> means fart. And those were the only words I really ever learned and probably will ever learn. One place that Y would never be employed at would be Weight Watchers. <laughs> she had the, the beautiful way of telling everybody that they were fat if they gained any weight. So uh, some people would probably find that offensive. Without, without having much or anything, materialistically we're speaking, she managed to give all. Chinese envelopes to the workers at Noodle Wang, always wanting to take care of everybody. She never complained uh, about anything and always saw the bright side to things, always smiling and, again, never complaining. It was a way of life that probably a lot of us would like to live, and uh, she did well. One good thing that I, I can always say I really appreciate from Sai and Y is that they never complained if we as a family, meaning Linda, myself, and the children, went off and did something. And it could have been a holiday, the most special holiday to anybody. And if we had an opportunity to go somewhere or do something, a family vacation, uh, there was no complaints that they were left out. They allowed us to pursue what we wanted to do. 
And as a token of our, our appreciation, we left them our dogs. <laughs> I'm glad that, that Cy and Y were able to be a part of our wedding, and I know that brought joy throughout the family, all the families, you know. Um, the Wu's, the Fong's, and the Quan's. So it was a good, good, good way to have everybody get together. I think that's one of her proudest moments where she was uh, very happy. <clears throat> I can remember my mother asking what Linda's mother's name was. And this conversation took 10 to 15 minutes. I sort of played with it, but when my mother asked directly what Linda's mother's name was, I said, why? And my mother's response was, because I'm asking you and I want to know her name. So I said, why? And I, I just kept going on with that, and it was easy to do. Uh, because my mother was foolish enough just to keep going on with it. Why so was not the sportsman. However, we did take great pleasure in seeing her beat Cy in tennis at O'Kim's house on the Wii, and she completely, brutally, savagely beat beat Cy. He had no chance. And uh, that was quite pleasurable for all of us. I think this is one of my funniest statements. Why was the only person who didn't know how to drive but gave Cy lessons whether or not he wanted them? As a result of those lessons, Look at Sai's car. You would have thought it was entered in a demolition derby. The House of Carpets was going to sue Y for stealing their name. She had more carpets on her floor than Flooring Depot. On a serious note, Y worked long hours long days. I can remember living with them when she got up at 4 or 5 o'clock and was out of the house. And she didn't return until 8 o'clock at night. And then immediately upon entering, she didn't go to the bathroom. She didn't go to the kitchen to start cooking. She immediately found her broom. The roof could have been falling down on the house. There could have been a fire. But her answer to everything upon entering the home was retrieving her, her broom and sweeping. She never complained about those long hours, and she did it until she stopped to help us with the children. The trips to Maryland with Y and Cy and seeing their family together was quite, quite fun and rewarding. Not only did we have good meals and see the sisters and families laugh and talk together, but we were also given the opportunity to see why fight with her sisters for who was going to pay for the bill. Well, Grace, the next time we go out, it's on you. The last meal that we had with Y was at Noodle Wong formerly known as Noodle Chu. It was for Sai's birthday. We knew she wasn't feeling well by then. Something was wrong. We didn't really know what it was. But Y wanted to go out, and we obviously were going to fulfill those that desire for her. We went to Noodle Wong, and the words that she uttered will be remembered. We asked her what she wanted, and she simply said, lobster. So we knew we had to get her lobster that day. Whatever it was, she wanted lobster. And she quietly, slowly ate the lobster. So, that's
to some things I wanted to share about why the day for her today, and hopefully we could get together when the COVID settles down a little bit. Everybody could get together. Okay? Thank you. Grandma was the best. I remember when we would all go to the bedside together and she would always enjoy the food. It was always fun to hang out with her and she will be missed by all of us. I remember when me and Mia would come home from school and there would always be chicken nuggets in the oven, chicken and black bean and rice waiting to be eaten. I love you, Grandma, and we miss you. been practicing as far as what to say. I think she got a little shy. But that's okay. I'm sure Grandma knows what you wanted to say. Okay? I really don't have anything written, sort of, really. Um, the only thought that I had was that everyone else's funeral, my family members, and unfortunately it's been quite many, I've already spoken. This was a little harder, so I wasn't even quite sure if I could make it. Um, <clears throat> I know that I'm very lucky and blessed that she got the opportunity to experience my own funeral. She got to be a, a grandmother. She got to have a son-in-law. So, I'm happy that she experienced that. Some people don't get to. And then as you look at the picture on the video, you see the family that we have. Visiting Marilyn was always about family, eating, getting together, just laughing. And that's one thing that I'll miss. In the mornings, she would always call a friend, a family member. It was just a thing that she had to do. It's just that's how she was. She was always giving, loving, and like, Joe said she never complained about anything. And when we moved in with them, same thing, never complained. She pretty much took over their house. They didn't have much to give, but whatever they had, they gave. I guess the one thing is I know that I'm glad that you went suffering, but I just wish we had some time to see her. Sometimes you think it's not fair. And it wasn't, it wasn't fair for her at all to be alone for so long, not one month. <laughs> Not two, it was almost three months.
so it's hard to say goodbye, but I know I have to. And I love you very much. Bye, Mom. I'll miss calling out to you, Ma.